Hi everyone, welcome to this vlog. This is going to be for week one of the Clear Your Shit Readathon. Don't know what Clear Your Shit is? Uh, I don't really know either yet. I <laughs> just heard about it a couple days and it's officially November 1st when the readathon happens and the goal of this is to only read books that you already have and tackle the consumerism problem that the bookish corner of the internet seems to have. This was uh, created by Mouse Reads and Art, who are both book, book bloggers. They're both on Instagram. I know Mouse has a YouTube. I don't know if Art does. I will link all, all information down below. There is a storyline to this readathon, which I'm still learning because this is the fourth year and it is like, I, I have a lot of research to do, but I wanted to just jump in with the prompts because I do feel a little stuck in my reading right now, even though I do like the books I'm currently in the middle of, I just feel stuck and lot like I lost a little bit of momentum and I'm reading just to get them done, which is not the vibe I really want for November even though that's kind of the project I gave myself for November, but I thought this might be a fun way to, I don't know, inject some life into my reading. Prompts are all astrology based this year. And the first prompt is Gemini, read a book with two main characters. I think I know what book I'm gonna pick. I believe Ocean's Echo has two main characters, but I need to go and look. So let's go investigate. All right, this angle is less than stellar, but it's okay. So this has two main characters. This has Tanel and Surit. I believe this is, gosh, I'm so close and so tilty. I believe this is an arranged marriage like Ocean's no, Winter's Orbit was, um, but I'm gonna go ahead. I have some chores to do. It's almost dinner time. I have laundry. Oh, we have to start taking down the Halloween decorations. That's sad. My camera battery needs to charge. So I'm gonna see if I can use a credit on Libro FM to download the audiobook and then um, start listening to this while I do my responsible people things. And then hopefully later this evening, I will be able to switch to reading it with my eyeballs. about a hundred pages into Ocean's Echo, actually 134 pages. And I finally feel like I have a good enough grasp on the world building to give a slightly coherent update. So this is a science fantasy space opera. I, th I think those are all the words <laughs> that would work. So we're in a different, we're not in like the universe as we know it. We're in a uh, made up one. And we have Tenal, who is like an aristocratic, sad rich boy, basically. <laughs> and then we have Surit, who is the son of a general who committed a traitorous action back when Surit was really, really young. Basically, in this world, you can be an architect and have the power to control other people's minds. And then there's also a brand of person called a reader, which started out being a man-made ability. And then the military decided that creating readers was really dangerous. <laughs> Sorry, the light is going to change so much. <laughs> Um, that readers were dangerous and so now the readers are really rare but some children did inherit reader genetics from their parents and readers have the ability to read people's minds but can't influence people's minds the way architects can and uh, 
there's a lot of fear and prejudice against readers in this world, even though I think the architects sound way scarier. So Tenal is a, Tenal is a sad rich boy and he is basically banished to the army by his aunt for his reprehensible behavior of being a sad rich boy and in an effort to control him she is going to force him to sync with an architect and basically what that means is that their their minds are always melded together like there's no unsinking unless you die and obviously Tanal does not want to do that and it's supposed to be illegal to sink without consent but of course the military is very very corrupt and does not care that it's illegal there's actually several laws regarding what architects can and can't do and the military breaks those laws all the time and then surat is the lieutenant who is picked to sink with tanal and surat does not want to do it because tanal does not want to cons does not consent and so obviously he's not going to do it. And that's basically where I've gotten to. And then uh, Tanal and Surat hatch a plan to pretend to have synced in order to help each other get out of the really untenable situations that this military has put them both in. And that's where I've gotten to. That's all of what is on like the, the synopsis on the dust jacket. And I l still really like Everina Maxwell's writing. I like her world building. I don't love how heavy these books are. <laughs> that part's always hard. I remember um, Winter's Orbit really fondly, but also remember that it was a much, oh my god, <laughs> lighting today, a much harder read than I was anticipating. And, and same with this. They're both dealing with a lot. But now that they're starting to connect with each other, um, I, I, I like the di their dynamic a lot. I think Everina Maxwell writes the best space sad boys there are. And I like this dynamic of hot mess partier person love interest and like really straight laced love interest. That dynamic is always fun for me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep reading. I do also have this on audio and for the most part, I do like the audiobook, except the narrator is doing an accent for Surat that caught me off guard and I'm not really sure what the point of the accent is and it tends to distract from Surat's lines more than it adds to them. So I don't know that I'll be picking up the audiobook a whole lot, but yeah, I'm nine. I still have a lot of book to go, so. Hello. This is a different angle for me. I don't know if I like this, but this is what we're this is what we're working with right now. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Um, let's do a quick update. First of all, I am ooh, almost halfway through Ocean's Echo. I have only been really reading this since I last updated you. The accent that the narrator has chosen for Surat is just so distracting that. I am only picking up the audiobook when reading is just really not, not possible. The reading with my eyeballs is not possible. But I just got a text message from my library that one of my library books is due back. And so I think I'm going to use that for the second prompt. Okay, I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's reset a little bit. Um, let me find the prompt for, okay. So here's the deal with clear your shit is ideally you were supposed to use it to read through 
the books you already own. However, I do have two library books I am already in the middle of, plus a couple that I had already checked out. And so I'm going to allow myself to use the library books I already have out from the library, but I am not going to take out any more, any additional books from the library. And any library books that I read between now and the end of the year, I, I, if they're, hmm, I'm just thinking this through. Okay, so yes, I'm going to keep the library books I currently have and allow myself to use them for this challenge, but any additional library books that I take out between now and the end of the year, if I read them, they will not count towards clear your shit. Yeah. Okay, so prompt two is Libra. Let someone choose between two books for you. And what I did is I put a poll up on my Instagram asking people to help me choose because I could have asked somebody in real life, but sometimes I get, my husband will laugh when he sees this, but sometimes I get weirdly contrary when people tell me what to do. And I wanted to avoid that uh, impulse. So I asked Instagram to choose for me and I gave Instagram a choice Oh, between two books that I am already in the middle of that I would like to finish. And one of them was Out There Screaming, edited by Jordan Peele. And the other was The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. And these two books have been tied in the poll since I posted it. Very frustrating. What ultimately is making the choice for me is my library just texted me and said this is due back in four days. So I am going to keep reading The Hollow Places. Uh, this is about Kara who is getting a divorce and in the interim as she tries to figure out her life goes to stay in a spare room in her uncle's house which also holds the glory to god museum of natural wonders curiosities and taxidermy and her uncle very quickly ends up having to go to the hospital for health issues and Kara is left in charge and one evening she and Simon the barista of the coffee shop next door, discover a hole in the wall of the museum that leads into a space that shouldn't exist. Like takes up more space than is possible for it to take up in the building. So I think this is, this is horror. I think it's gonna be a little bit of like a portal fantasy as well. And let's, let's see if I can get it read in four days. And I am still, like I said, still reading this. Uh, let me tell you though, I got to the part, a part yesterday where Tenal can, Tenal can tell Surat is attracted to him, but Surat is our really like buttoned up character. And Tenal, in an attempt to avoid his feelings and also because he is a person who uses sex as an avoidant strategy, propositions, Surat, and Surat shuts him down so fast and it rocks Tanal's world in the best way. <laughs> and I loved that moment so much. It was absolutely delightful to see Tanal set back on his heels for a hot second. So um, this is this is going great. And now we're gonna we're gonna add this puppy in and I'm going to just keep on going and I love, oh, okay. I did stuff. All right. Um, I love how this readathon is going so far because it's just mixing up my reading life and like I'm reading stuff that I would have read anyways, but it's just making the process of picking them a little bit more fun. Good morning, friends. It's Saturday. I got to do a quick car update. Before I go to work, I am 60 something percent of the way through Ocean's Echo. I always want to call it Winter's Orbit. That's not what I'm reading. Ocean's Echo. And last night I was really worried. Last night I thought this book was too long. Um, it, I felt like the pacing was really slow. I was really frustrated that the romance wasn't like 
romancing, which I know is ironic because my complaint about like the Daughter of the Moon Goddess books was that there was too much romance, but then in this there's not enough romance. <sighs> so I was really going through it last night. I was worried I was going to DNF it because I was at like 200 and something and I was just like, why do I still have 250 book pages left in this book? Why is it so long? I still feel like it might be too long, but now it is um, picking up. There's a lot of stuff happening now. It feels a lot faster paced. I I don't think there, the romance is still not, not romancing the way I want it to, which makes me sad, but I, I am enjoying it more. I'm going to be honest. I feel like this is going to be a four, maybe a 3.75, which... <laughs> I don't love that for myself. I really wanted this to be a five-star read, <sighs> but maybe it'll change. Maybe the ending will, will bump it up. I, I'm disappointed. <laughs> uh, I am hoping I can finish this today. Oh, that feels ambitious. Maybe not. Maybe I'll finish it tomorrow because I really should work on hollow places. For the rest of today when I get home because I have designated a good amount of time to this one so I should probably switch to hollow places when I get home because that one is due back I have to return that one in a couple days whereas this one I could keep forever if I wanted to I don't know if I will I don't know I don't know I feel so disappointed in how my reading has gone the last several months and it's not like I've read horrible things. Like I have enjoyed pretty much every book I've picked up with a few exceptions, but I just haven't, you know, that feeling of when you were a kid and you would read a book and it would just be all consuming and it was so easy to dive right in and just disappear. And I haven't had that feeling very much lately and I miss it and I want it back. I'm not sure how to get it back. I get it. Uh, the closest I get is when I read horror, but I also want to be careful with how much I read horror because right now I get that feeling, but I'm worried that if I work horror more into my reading life that my tolerance will change and then I'll have this problem that I'm having right now, but I'll have it with horror. So I don't I don't know what to do, but I don't like it. Please let me know if you also have experienced this. If you know what I'm talking about, let's commiserate together in the comments, please. And on that note, I'm going to go into work and oh, I will update you all later. I finished Ocean's Echo and I think I settled on a three and a half. I can't believe the sentence is about to come out of my mouth, but this lost me on the logic of the world. I could not get on board with a world that thinks people with the ability to temporarily mind control are less harmful than people who can only feel what you are feeling. That just, I could never, I could never, I could never get there. I could never get on board. And it didn't matter how Everina Maxwell tried to explain it or tried to rationalize it. I just, I could never buy that logic. And it just never made sense. I also thought that the romance was too much of a back burner. I did not buy, I never bought that Tanal and Sorit ever actually fell in love. I felt like there wasn't enough basis for the romance before they dived into like 
the psionic mental power connection thing. And then once the mental connection thing became part of the plot, then any affection or romantic feelings that they might have had for each other just felt just never felt earned and I didn't really ever buy that there was a romance going on here and overall I just I mean and when she was focused on the romance her writing is so lovely and romantic like achingly romantic like there were some sentences when Tanal and Sir were focusing on their feelings for each other that was really beautiful and like achingly tender and sweet but then it just didn't feel earned in that moment because she hadn't laid enough of a groundwork of seeing these two have feelings for each other there was like that instance of like oh i'm attracted to you and then they just avoided it for like 200 pages and then all of a sudden it was it was like, oh no, I'm in love with you. I'm like, are you really? Because I haven't I haven't seen a build up to this. So yeah, overall, not my favorite. I'm giving it a three and a half, but yeah, at the end of the day, I just couldn't I couldn't buy into the logic, and I didn't buy into the romance. So maybe a three and a half is even too high I don't know I've been debating if I'm rating books too high lately and I might be I don't know what do you think do you think I'm rating books too high do you think I'm being too generous should I should this be a three I also was bored in like largely the first half um, there were moments where I got more engaged, but overall I was bored and then I got more engaged for a while and then I got bored again. I also feel like this is too long. Like we could have told this story in like 350 pages and then maybe my reading would have been higher because I wouldn't have felt bored. Ooh, maybe it's, maybe it's a three. All right, I'm gonna have to think about it. Anyways, so first book for clear shit is done this is also my self-destructing tbr book for the month which uh is awesome that a i finished it and did not dnf and b that i read it at the beginning of the month instead of scrambling to read it before the month is over so uh progress for me now need to finish the hollow places i am like there i was trying not to get the audio book but I gave to that the audiobook. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I just love an audiobook. Uh, so I am going to get dressed. I am still in my like grubby morning. Also, um, happy time change to all who <laughs> dread. Uh, everybody woke up because of the time change. Everybody woke up before six this morning. Love that for me. So uh, I am going to get dressed and see if looking like I'm not a gremlin helps with my energy level and um, I'm going to listen to this on audio because I think that sounds fun. Okay, bye. I just need you all to understand what my poor husband goes through. He, I have all these very nice tripods to go with my camera and yet I still end up using my Stanley as a tripod for my camera. Would you believe that it's only 2.30? <laughs> it's so dark and gloomy outside. But I ended up finishing The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. Thank goodness for audiobooks. I listened to it at the gym and then I was listening to it while I was doing chores. Y'all, I even, I voluntarily cleaned the bathroom just so I could keep listening to the audiobook. And that is my most hated chore. I will do anything to avoid cleaning the bathroom, but I did it, so I feel pretty virtuous right now. The Hollow Places was really fun. I'm gonna give it, I think, four and a half stars is what I landed on because it was really fun, it was really creative, it was creepy, it was funny. I don't find T. King Fisher's brand of horror scary but it's totally fine i am really not looking 
to get scared. I don't think it's my favorite Teaking Fisher, which is why it's a four and a half because I think every other Teaking Fisher horror I've given five. So I think it's maybe my least favorite, but I mean, that that's <laughs> not a big designation. It's only like a half star difference from the other three. And I liked that I had read The Willows. It's definitely not necessary. If you watched my Halloween or my 24 hour horror readathon vlog, then, um, well, if you didn't watch it, in that I read the short story from 1907 that inspired this. And I think if, and that's called The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. I was saying Blackwell in like all my videos talking about it and then realized that's not actually his last name. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's necessary to read that to read this, not at all. This stands on its own perfectly fine. But if you have read The Willows, then there are some fun Easter eggs in this book. And I yeah, thought this was a really fun portal horror fantasy. I, I don't know what the collection of words would be to describe this, but those are the ones I would pick because uh, I think that describes it pretty well. I liked all the characters. There's not as much of an animal sidekick as there is in most of Kingfisher's books, but there's still, there's still, still a little one. Okay, I'm just about out of memory card. Feeling really good about this start to the Clear Your Shit readathon, and um, this video is going to be a little bit shorter because the first week was a little bit shorter. Um, the new prompts get released on Sundays, but because November didn't start on to a Wednesday, this week was a little bit abbreviated. So I'm really excited to pick my next prompt and I'm going to go start the next vlog. So if you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and spending your precious time with me. If you would like to leave a comment, but you don't have anything to say, let's leave a tree emoji <laughs> and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Bye.